from Fire Flame Scrappy Mania and today I want to create a layout using these two boys and I'm using this boy paper um, from Heidi Swap. It's an old um, paper pad but I want to use it for the boy layout because the colors and the motif is more it's leaning more towards um, a boy kind of type of layout so that's why I want to use it so and these are some of the leftovers. I've done some layouts with it. So they're really nice. I mean, it has that masculine feel. You see there? So I really want to use these for my layout and for also, I'm going to use it to create um, embellishments and outfits for my boys. I really like this, this paper. It's very nice paper. And then this one don't go. It's not. I need. That was. I had these in a in an area for that one. Kind of got in my stack, and it shouldn't have been in there. And then I got these Kathy Davis papers. It also there's some. This could be for explore. I think that looks very masculine. Some of these are masculine. You can use it for masculine pages. Journey is a nice one. N nice one. So I may incorporate some of these in here, um, especially that one might look nice for um, an outfit or for my boys. So let me go ahead. I need to find some papers that I can use for the skin tones. Actually, it's these two that I want to use. They look like brothers. And then I'm going to kind of cut some of these kites and things like that. I'm going to use that for embellishments. But before I do that, I want to show you my inspiration. The inspiration for this layout, it's on Pinterest. So I went into Pinterest. And so this is a sketch that I'm going to use for my layout. And actually the sketch is inspired by Close to My Heart. And it's a it's their papers and embellishments. But sometimes I do get inspired by like Close to My Heart or Stamping Up and, th and things like that. The, their layouts, I use those. I don't necessarily use their paper or the embellishments. But I do use their um, sketch for my ideas and for my layout and it's not going to look exact it's just going to be very similar so let me go ahead i need to find some skin tone and some other um, craft paper so i can start um, stamping these and cutting them out and i shall be back so what i'm going to use for the bodies of my um dolls is going to be this paper by prima and this is actually from the ledger pad so that's what i'm going to use for the background you know to for the face and the kind of the background of the doll and then the different other papers for the clothing now another thing i want to kind of go over with you is my choice for the papers that i'm going to be using and let me kind of go over a little bit of my choice now i i was thinking about doing like a cream color base for my layout like you can see the base there is cream color but then I wanted to make this this is boy this is a boy layout so I wanted to make it energetic so when I put the cream base with the papers from Heidi Swap they look they do go nicely together but it looks dull it doesn't have like that excitement that I'm looking for but then if I take that out and then I pair it with this paper as the background, look how bright, boilish looking. It looks like exciting. It looks like, you know, there's some movement. I just like the cream, the, the yellow color instead of a neutral cream or, or card or craft color. So I am going to use this as my base. And then I'm going to start stamping these out. And I don't want to bore you with my stamping techniques, so I'm just going to stamp them out. I'm going to cut them out, and then um, I'm going to cut out some outfits. And then before I assemble it, I'm going to go ahead and show you on camera how I assemble and shade my, my boys. So I'll be back. So in order to get a nice impression with these stamps, they're so large, you really need to have... Uh, uh, a clip lock that will fit your stamp. I like this Fisker. It really works very nicely because I can use a, a variety of stamps.
stamps with this Fisker and also I can even put multiple stamps together and make like a little collage onto this plate and then stamp it down and because it has these foam little feet I can position my stamp where I want it and then when I'm ready if I like the position I could go ahead and push down and stamp so that's why I like this Fisker one and it was on sale when I purchased it some time ago so the other trick is to have something that is cushioned underneath when you stamp and this is some packing material that came with one of my supplies so I keep this and what I do is I put it underneath my um, paper and then I go ahead and put the the little boy or the stamp onto this acrylic block make sure that I have it positioned where I want it and then once I have it positioned push down and stamp and it always gives me a nice impression so the next thing I want to show you is I went ahead and cut a lot of the outfits and you don't have to stamp the whole stamp you just stamp like I only want the shirt here so I stamp just that little portion and I just want the overalls and I just want the shoes in this one and I did the same thing with the other one just little you know different areas I went ahead and stamped those what I want to do is I want to show you how I shade. I'm using my watercolor crayons from um, Stat Statler. And um, one thing that I like doing is before I cut the image out, I like to use my watercolors and color it in. Because if I do go off a little bit on the edges, it won't be a big deal. Because I just trim that out. So what I do is I like to put a little bit of color first. So this is my base color. And I'm going to put some on the little my little figurine. And then I'm going to use an aqua pen and I'm just going to blend that in. And this Prima paper is nice and thick, even though it's not watercolor paper, it doesn't warp as much as if you use regular um, cardstock or regular paper. So I want to bring some shading. So if you can see there, it looks nice, but it's kind of flat. So let's go ahead and put some shading. So I'm going to use some brown. And what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of the brown on my brush, just a little bit. And kind of go around where the shade is going to be. See, around where that, um, his hair. So there's going to be some shading around that area. And then I'm going to put underneath the chin, there's going to be some shading as well. And don't need to put a lot. It's just a little bit of shading. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other, with the brother. I'm going to put a little shading around the hairline. And then underneath the chin. And if I put a little too much, as you can see there, I have a little too much. I can just clean my brush and then go over it again and remove some of that. See how it removes it? Then I'm going to put a little bit on underneath the t-shirt. And then just blend it out. Now for the hair, I'm going to go ahead and use black. And let me make sure I have the black one. This is black. And I'm just going to put some around where the mark, the um, outline is or where your, the areas like you see there. And then I'm going to outline the hairline a little bit with my crayon. And then this is where I'm going to use my water to kind of shade it in or blend it blend it in and 
and because I'm cutting it out after I have um, colored my doll I don't have to be very neat so if I go off a little bit that's okay because I'm gonna cut it out and see how different that looks it really gives it dimension it really looks nice and then I'm gonna do the same thing for his brother I just really love these stamps and I'm glad that she came out with some boy stamps because it really gives it opens the possibilities of being able to create out um, layouts not only for the girls but also for the boys okay so now that I'm done with that I'm gonna set that aside and then I'm gonna start cutting these out so I'm gonna speed up the video at, as I start composing the pieces together so let me go ahead and speed up the video one thing you want to keep in mind when you cut these outfit up out you need to kind of leave a little tab so that way it, it makes it easier so you can glue the pieces together and in a moment I'll show you what I kind of I mean about leaving a little tab so um, I cut everything out And then now I'm ready to glue everything together. So if you cut only the shoe, sometimes it's a little harder to put on. So that's why I always cut myself a little more, a little area, a, a larger area, so that way I can easily place this on top like that. And then you want to do the same thing with the shirt. So that way you can place that on top like that and see that's perfect. If you cut, if you cut this piece out and then the, the other pieces, sometimes it doesn't really position very well. And I like to kind of assemble my, my clothes before I put it on the doll. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this out. I'm going to use a... something to spread this and see that's perfect I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna do the same thing here notice I left a little lip there so I'm gonna put some glue on my lip area so then I assemble everything um, first all the clothes first and then now I'm gonna cut out my um, my dolls and I'm not being very careful around the clothing area, just where the head and the arms are. I want to make sure I cut those precise. And then here again, I'm just going to make sure I, I take care of cutting the arms and the head. Make sure I don't cut, it, cut that too close. But other than that, the clothes are going to hide any imperfection within the body area. So these are my two dolls. Put these aside so they would dry and now I'm going to start on my layout. I got all my papers and then let me show you what I used. I used this knockout punch. Now I did find this at Tuesday morning and it's for and they had it for $20. So I was able to get the set and um, these things you can change them and then it stores per very nicely in this case. And you have six punches, border punches, for the price of one. Because it was 20 bucks. And it fits nicely. So I did that. And then I had this other die that I purchased at HSN. It's a Do Craft die. And it's one that comes with the balloon and it does all this. So I went ahead and created a air balloon. And then this is part of the paper pad. And I cut a lot of those cut apart. So the... Um, this one, the Haiti Swap papers comes with a lot with a couple of sheets of cut aparts, and I like to cut them apart ahead of time. And I put them in a little baggie and my scraps. I put it in here and I keep it with the paper pad. So um, I had a lot of little pieces and scrap, and that's what I use to create my borders, some um, letters and things like that, and I have some stars. I also gonna use. The kite from, I used a kite 
from the stamp and I also created a little skateboard and I'm going to use that. So let me go ahead and start composing my layout. And I'm referring back to um, my sketch. So this is my sketch. So I'm going to put that aside there so that way I can refer back to it. And let me go ahead and put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and ink all the edges because I wanted a little more definition. This layout is bright and happy and I know, I know that it... It really, I really like when I um, are have are creating bright layouts to use black ink as an accent for the edges, and then I want to tape it together because I am going to compose it as one unit. And then when I once I finish putting the layout together, I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. So here I'm just putting all my pieces together, and I put my alphabet play. And I wanted something to ground it. I didn't really like the strip that I put underneath. So I decided to just use some of my washi tape and use that as a to ground my my title. So here I'm just putting the banners, putting more clusters on one side. And as you notice, to balance the page, I have a lot of embellishments on the upper right hand side. And then I decided I was going to put the boys on the left hand of my layout underneath my banners. But then it felt like my page was leaning towards one side. It just, it had too much weight on the left. So to balance it out, notice how by putting the boys on the opposite side and the balloon on top, my page seems more balanced. I already put the washi tape under my title and I really like how it grounded my title and I do like how the whole layout is coming together. So now I'm just splitting it in half. The image here. So that is the inspiration sketch from Close to My Heart. Okay. And then this is the layout. So I kept the scallops, just like the, um, the sketch, and I kept the banner. Now I added the explorer, I added this title here, and then I added the kite here with some stars. And if you notice on the sketch, let me go back to the sketch, there is some kind of kite or something there with a tail, and then there's a balloon there or a hot air balloon and then a title there and then there's the um, bird there so to balance it out I put the boys in, in, in place of the bird I put a hot air balloon here my title here and instead of a square mat I went ahead and put two circle um, elements here and then here's my kite and my title and my banner. So that's my interpretation of that sketch. And I really love these boys. I forgot the skateboard that I created. So I'm going to put it right here. And I put some foam adhesive. I'm just going to go right here. And there. So this is my layout. And here's the finished layout. I really like how it come out came out and I really like the colors. It really makes it happy for a happy layout. So I hope you like this and thank you for watching. Bye now.